Last September, I was privileged to have quality time with a man who so understands hospitality, radical hospitality, authentic hospitality. His name is Gordon Draft, Reverend Gordon Draft, Minister Emeritus of the Middle Collegiate Church in the East Village in New York City. He wrote a wonderful book that I commend to you. One foot planted in the center, the other dangling off the edge. That's kind of what it feels like when you're working on embracing radical hospitality. You're doing it, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can do it, I have to do it. It feels uncomfortable, and you're committed to it. Well, Gordon Black offered me some wonderful, wonderful thoughts on how we can be hospitable, how we can invite others in to our congregations, our communities. I've given you a sheet with 16 tips for what you might do. You really don't need to go there. You can take that home. <laughs> but let me give you some gems from what he shared with me. Transformation is long haul work. Do not expect to be transformed in a flash. It is not going to happen. Knowing that should help you on the journey. This is long haul work. What was his first tip? He invites us to tap into the power of authority. If you want a wonderfully beautiful liturgical dance, find one who will do that well to come into your midst. If you want beautiful worship arts, find an expert to help show you the way. Don't go in alone. He encourages us to be good scouts, to go out there outside of these walls, dare to go out and meet people different from yourselves. Make the calendar work for you. We all plan special events for special days, national holidays, religious days. Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday is an example. Introduce tough, tough, tough issues such as anti-racism, anti-oppression, and multiculturalism on such a day. What could you do? Music, drums, piano, bringing folks who can work the music. Music that might be different to your congregation. Your congregation will like this music, I have no doubt. Resistors to diverse music will like it. The setting will be different. We're doing this for Dr. King's birthday. This is not about the rest of the year. They come in, they like it, and they may want more. Notice those events. Look at the calendar and notice events where you might draw folks in. You will draw them in and you will draw folks who are inside the circle in. And you do it with a low with transformation of hospitality. It's not one without the other. It's not just going out there and bringing anyone in. It's knowing who is in here and stretching with those in here as well as stretching a hand to those outside. Hornbrack speaks about change and he actually calls 
causes me to rethink much of my imagining. He shares that short-term change in our congregations is as important as long-term change. So those of us with little patience who want to get it happening quickly have to slow down. Slow down. Systemic change takes time. Much time. Everything must change and will change. But in change, you want to be able to recognize the familiar. Gordon Brad invites us to befriend and actually pamper your detractors. What on earth might that look like? To befriend your detractors, to pamper them, to try to understand who they are, where they might be coming from, and to know that this, this, this detractor might be a reflection of you in the mirror of our faith. All right. Always, always, always stay on message, he advises us. Stay on message. We are a congregation dedicated to X, Y, Z. You want to repeat that? You want to know it? You want to wake up or just know? What am I about in my congregation? Yes. Creating diverse spiritual anti-racist community, perhaps. Know that 24 hours a day and live into that. And leadership, dear friends, must be intentional, must be adaptive, and must be transformational. If the city cuts funding for an after-school program, what can you do? You take it? When you start an after-school program in your community. Leaderly leadership, lead. You must develop partnerships. You're not going it alone. We're not going it alone. It's going to carry universalists. We need each other, and we can be bold in reaching out to others. For yourself, not because you should, 
but because you yearn to be different, not for them, but for yourself, for ourselves. Mark Morrison Reed is an African American Unitarian University minister. His words, oh my big brother, sustain me in the work of building multicultural community. I want to own that there was a time when I was not so sure that I would be one of those long haulers committed to building the world we dream about. I'm fascinated. I am called into this work, this dream, mindful of the many identities that I bring as a woman of color, as a Unitarian Universalist, oh, as a Caribbean woman of African descent, as a mother, as a widow, as a daughter, as a sister, a twin sister, an educator, a friend, and surely as a human being, I am called to stay the course with each of you. How did I end up with hopes of becoming a participant in this race to build a beloved community, to truly understand hospitality in its essence. How did I do this? It's been a process, and I really wanted you to hear that it has not always been easy. I come from Jamaica, and I'm proudly of the Caribbean diaspora. See, although culturally, once of the colonial Caribbean diaspora were names like Evelyn, Alicia, Patricia, and Janice translate to Evelyn, Alicia, Patricia, and Janice. Even in terms of language, they, they messed with us. I'm a citizen of the world. Some of you know that. I'm an internationalist and I love to describe myself as such. I'm a product of the United Nations International School, a wonderful school system that allowed me the opportunity to live in many different countries over many different years get to a new country, get to a new city, and know which page to open any of my books in any of my subjects. It was radical international education that helped me to understand what the loved community could look like. In addition to living around the world, I had the privilege from kindergarten to, to 12th grade to have friends with names like Rima Pachachi from Iran, Naveen and Shereen Hamdi from Egypt, Lars Dahl from Denmark, Benji Lee from China, Abdullah Saba from Nigeria, Richard Lethal from Israel, Bubbles Bangira from Afghanistan, Cynthia Finley from New York. I assure you, one of my learnings from school was learn people's names, learn to pronounce people's names. You don't have to ask for a shortcut. Abdullah, do you mind if I call you Lee? You don't have to do that. That's the respect we give one another, the honoring we give one another, that I think is so important. 